Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Jan. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us and for listening. Our family is your family. Your family is ours. And we really, really appreciate you guys. We're the family who what, Cade? Uh, believes the Torah is for all generations that we should be following it. And who is our Messiah, Jade? He is Yehoshua. He is the Son of the Most High. People know him as Jesus. They say he got rid of the law, but he kept the law, he taught the law, and he died so that we could have salvation from breaking the law. Yeah, and Eli is our Messiah and the Creator. Are they the same entity? No, they are two separate people. He is the and Yehoshua is the Son, and Yahuwah is the Father. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Um, are you guys ready to rock and roll? Yep. Okay. We are into chapter 20 on this, and chapter 20 is long, and so it's gonna we're, we're going to split this one into three sections here, and so we will begin. And that's our dogs that are doing what they do. My apologies. We have um, 10 furry alligators, commonly known as pit bulls, and so here we are. Okay, one. Yahushua was brought privately before Ananias, son of Seth, who, after questioning Yahushua, sent him to the supreme council of the Yahudium which was a symbol. He also sent a message saying, this man is deluded, but nonetheless dangerous, and these are troubled times. Who's is Anias? Who is he? Um, privately before Anias. I don't know. I don't, I don't recall him. I remember we had Herod and uh, the other, like, uh, Pontius Pilate. Yeah, well, this is the, these are the um, priests. These are the actual priests. These are before Rome. And so this is the, um, the, the, the priest, right? And this is, I think, at night. I think they talk about it nice. We've talked about it nice, haven't we? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's the one that I believed prophesied that one person would have to die for the sake of the whole country. I think is that, that who it is. Okay, two. When Yahushua was taken away, Shimon Kepha followed at a distance. And after Yahushua was brought from the residence of Anias, he followed and came to the forefront of the temple, but could not go beyond because of the disturbance. Servants lit a brazier of charcoal and stood warming themselves for the night was cold and Kepha stood with them while he stood there a relative of the high priest named Yosef but called Yochanan a follower of Yahushua in secret came and spoke to the woman at the door and went into the chamber hall he also spoke to Kepha then a maidservant came and spoke with the woman at the door who came over to Kepha and said you are one of the Galileans followers but Kepha said, I am no friend of his. You must be mistaken. So the two just like, they came up to him and said, they probably figured it out because he just started talking to the other guy. Yeah, and so there's a lot to be said on this whole thing. Um, because Kepha could not, because he was not a, um, like a uh, Pharisee or Sadducee or anything of the sort, he could not go into where they were going. And so somebody came and basically recognized him and then whispered to the girl. And um, then she came and, you know, are you, 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 are you the Galilean's followers? And there's his first, I am no friend of his. You must be mistaken. And that's hardcore, right? Because, you know, only, what, five hours earlier or probably less than that, they were, um, you know, he, he says he will die for him. He'll go to prison for him. He'll do all this. And, and Messiah knew this. And he knew that the testing of Kepha was, was going to fail. Five. However, the woman persisted saying, your speech betrays you. Then she cried out to those with the brazier. I don't even know what that is. Brazier? I, I don't know what that is. I don't know. Um, about the brazier. Be, and that's the fire. Whatever that is, is the charcoal and the fire. Beware. Here is one of the Galilean sorcerer's followers. Then the men clustered about Kepha and said, Certainly you are a Galilean. And some said, We have seen him with this rebel. Then they said to Kepha, Did you not cause trouble in the temple? We have seen you there. Okay, um, so a little bit more than we get from the Besora, right? We, we get the account of this, but we only get this, this account that, you know, they ask him this thing. But here, it's clear they, they, they surround him, right? All of a sudden, he becomes, um, you know, uh, in tr not, not really in trouble, but there's a tremendous amount of peer pressure. And because of what's happening to Messiah... Your first inclination is that they are going to do that to you as well. And so you're going to be in fear. Seven. Then the men said, the woman is right. You are a Galilean. Your speech witnesses against you. Others said, he is just a Galilean and laughed. Kepha then became angry and shouted, why do you pester me? I do not know the man. I have heard about him, but I have not seen him. Then the other disciple came out and told the men to leave Kepha alone. He took him by the arm and went out through the gateway. As they went, a cock crew, for the fowls were in the city, and Kepha wept bitterly, for he had failed the test. The other had compassion on Kepha because of the weakness of the flesh. And Kepha said, I will make amends. Then the disciple took Kepha to a place, a safe place nearby. 
So again, we get a lot more details out of this than we get with um, just the regular uh, Basora and the regular stories that we have. Um, you know, we did not know that there was another person, another disciple who, you know, was there. yeah, was there. And we don't know who exactly this was, but I mean, there's a lot of people, a lot of people, anybody who's a follower of Messiah is, is a disciple. And um, so, you know, there you have Kepha, you know, showing, you know, ex human problems, human fears, and, you know, failing the test ultimately. Ten. The Supreme Council had assembled that night in the chamber of hewn stone within the great temple. Though the Roman law did not permit men to sit in judgment during the night hours, the Supreme Council was afraid because of the mood of the people. When Yahushua stood before the council, he was asked, Are you the Mashiach? Elohim's anointed who will deliver us? Yahushua replied, I could deliver the people if you would let me do so. The high priest, son-in-law of Ananias, sat with the council, and he said to Yahushua, Are you Galilean? When Yahushua replied that he was, the high priest said, Surely you being a learned man know that no prophet will come from that place. Yahushua made no reply. Then a man named Nicodemus said to Yahushua, The Torah does not condemn any man without trying to understand his motives. Tell us why you do these things. No, is that a thing, like, try to understand their motives? Um, like, hey. it's, like, it's never, it's never, like, understand their reasoning. It's always, like, stop them from sinning, if you mean, I guess. <laughs> you know, th that could be um, part of the Talmud, right? Because with the Talmud, and for those who do not know what the Talmud is, the Talmud is a set of books. Um, essentially, it's Jewish mysticism that came out of Babylon, and it's, it's their, their so-called oral Torah that has been passed down from generation to generation, and it finally got recorded. The problem with their so-called oral Torah, besides it being absolutely corrupt, and when I say it's absolutely corrupt, um, when you read like things like the Sanhedrin, I, I think it was like Sanhedrin 25b, there are things about you being able to um, mol literally molest um, children, molest little children and, and, and um, get away with it. And it, it's just also how they um, allow you to treat what they call the goyim. Um, is that it is, um, you know, it, it's one of those things that you are, um, if they classify you as a goyim, um, you are lesser than a person. And we don't have any of that in Torah. We don't have anything of like that people are not able to be um, brought into the, the, the fold. If you want to be a child of the Most High, it says in scriptures that you need to follow the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator um, and definitely have the faith of Messiah Yahushua. But no, I don't think we have anything to, to answer Jade's question. I don't think the Torah says anything about trying to understand his motives um, because, you know, there is it's the Torah is black and white. Right. If you are caught in adultery, um, you don't just persecute one of them. You you kill them both. And if you um, you you don't bring witnesses with just one person, you bring them both. And it's a set of of rules and regulations. But the motives, regardless of the motives, I, I don't know so much as we could make a judgment based upon motives. So I, I think that is, uh, you're right, Jade. I don't think that is in Torah that we condemn them without understanding their motives. And I mean, but at that same time, there would be righteous judgment for that because there would be circumstances, I would imagine, that would be outside of that. So well, I mean, if you still break, you're hungry. That would be something. Yeah, you still break. Yeah, that, right, right, absolutely. And um, that's the thing: is is your motives? Are you going to cut off the guy's hand because he stole the bread, or are you going to have compassion on him um, because he was he was hungry? And so those kind of things. Um, so anyway, let's continue on. Sixteen. Yahushua answered, "Is it not written that if people are to be saved, there must be a suffering deliverer who will also be the anointed of Yahuwah? Nicodemus then said to the council. If this man is what he claims, he is harmless, for he brings suffering to none except himself. Then another counselor said, I myself have heard him, him say he comes not to suffer, but to bring a sword to free the people. Yahushua stood calm and serene. One of the elders said to him, Is it true you were born of fornication, and when born, your father Yosef and Miriam, the woman who gave birth to you, had to flee from the anger of the people? But 12 of those present witnessed for him that he was not the child of fornication, but of a rightly married mother. Though many of the elders tried to make out a case against Yahushua, they failed. For though there were witnesses who gave false evidence against him, others spoke in favor of Yahushua. Which is something we never ever heard before, right? Right. And uh, they were talking about like uh, him being born of fornication. Like, 
even so, that's not something you condemn. It's just the child being born for that for. Like, there's nothing he can do. He wasn't able to his choice. Yeah, no. So like, 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 they were trying to, like, like find, like, everything. Like, they condemn for his parents' uh, acts. Absolutely anything, right? And and so, yeah, that, that's it. You know, a child born of fornication, I mean, that's not the child's fault. There's there's no fault of the child on any of that, ever. Okay. Um, there, it's interesting, though, that we, we've never heard that there were anybody else within this thing, right? We, we Someone's trying to stand up for them. Yes, others trying to stand up for them. And, it, you know, that is that is good to know that Messiah wasn't completely alone during this time, that there were people that were, were on his side and had um, the the strength to not be scared because, you know, obviously Kepha was, was very scared at what was happening. Okay. Then a law scribe came forward and testified with the others. He had heard he had heard Yahushua declare that the temple was only a man-made structure, which he would destroy in three days. However, there was no agreement among the witnesses as to what had been said or what it meant. Some held Yahushua to be a sorcerer who spoke of magic, while others held him to be a madman whose talk was not rational. Many remained silent and thoughtful. One of the leading men among the elders stood up and said to Yahushua, Can you not speak for yourself and answer the accusations? Yahushua said, are the charges not being fully argued out? So um, they didn't even know, you know, these guys didn't even have the chart. They, no, didn't, they, even know. they didn't know too that. Like, oh, he would condemn himself here. Yeah, and so, uh, yeah, they're like, talk, talk to us. He's like... Uh, uh, yeah, and the thing, like he, like, he said that the temple is a man-made thing. It's like, okay, like, how is that, how is that a sin? Like, yeah, and absolutely, it was made by the hands of man. Ab absolutely. 25, the high priest said, I ask you, in the name of the Most High, Elohim, tell us. For we do not wish to make any mistake. Are you the Mashiach who will deliver us? Yahushua said, You ask this because others, witnessing what I say, what I do, say this is so. If I say I am the deliverer, I do not lie. I am the true son of Elohim, standing at his right hand, ready to obey his will, and I speak with divine authority. I am the one destined to bring down the whole structure, replacing it with a new rule. We had a lot more um, in depth of how this, how his little judgment went, their little uh, thing they had, their conversations they had. Yeah, absolutely. And this is, I mean, this this goes right along with scriptures, right? I mean, this would this is something that he would say. Um, now, this is a Trinity breaker, right? He says, "I am the Son of Elohim." Now, if the Trinity was real, he would he our Messiah is a filthy liar, right? And right. that's not. Him, he, our Messiah is not a liar. He does not lie. Neither does Elohim. Lies cannot do, come from forth from them. Um, and so, uh, yeah, these are these are and what Messiah said here. Them, them are fighting words, right? These Pharisees are like, oh, a new a new authority. Oh yeah, um, and you know you're standing at the right hand of Elohim. And so right there, um, we hear who stands at the right hand of Elohim, the Messiah. Twenty seven. Upon hearing this, the high priest said. We need no more witnesses, for we have all heard his, him blasphemy. The evidence for treason has been given by his own mouth. He is convicted through words from his own lips. What more is required before your verdict? But there was no little dispute among the elders. For some said, it is no crime to say I am the Mashiach who will deliver. Others said, it is no crime for a man to be misguided and deluded. For will not the deliverer be disclosed by deeds which this man has not performed? It was also said, is he not fulfilling the prophecies? Therefore, be wary in judgment. So One of, some of these guys are like, uh, this isn't against Torah. You know, it's like, if it's just not a sin, just like say, I'm, I'm the Messiah. Yeah, I mean, there's, we have no Torah command. We have nothing. There's nothing or in Torah. He, or if he's like mentally ill or crazy in the head, it's like, it's not a sin on him if he's mentally ill. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, help the guy if he's mentally ill. But The Kony's just trying to do everything. Get him out of here. Yep. One of the elders said, let us set the good this man does against the other. And is, this, is it not well known that he has a power of healing, not in other men? What wrong has he done? He has not called men to arms against Caesar. The high priest then stood up and said, If we allow this man to go free at this time, he will stir up trouble, the people being ripe for revolt. Then Caesar will send his legions against us, and the nation will be destroyed, for the hand of Caesar is heavy. We cannot set the life of one man against the lives of many. And those who would set him free are no friends of Rome. Neither can they be made friends of our people. Then some said, his crime is against Rome and not against us. But others said, what? Shall we deliver him into Roman cruelty? So they already, they already knew how cruel the Romans were, right? And the, the Romans have always been notorious for their tortures, for their ways. I mean, these people were advanced beyond their years as far as this goes. 32. 
The high priest said, this can be no concern of ours. We are shepherds of the people. Let those who speak against Caesar stand before Caesar's judgment seat. Let our judgment be that we found him guilty against Caesar and then leave him in Roman mercy. We gave no power. We have no power to condemn him. Okay, and this will be the last verse that we're going to do on this one. 33. Therefore, it being daylight, they bound Yahushua and delivered him to Pilate with the verdict. He is guilty against Rome. Okay, so there you see all of this, and you see exactly why they handed him over and how. They couldn't find nothing. They couldn't do, there's nothing they had. Yeah, and the only thing they had is um, what would be against Rome, right? And he, he still had nothing. He never did anything against Rome. He always said pay Caesar, so. Yep, pay to Caesar what is Caesar's. Um, I mean, even Pilate, when he got out of there, he's like, I there's only, I just, you know, fault in this guy. I wash my hands and leave this into your hands. Yeah. He, like, he pretty much gave him back to him. And Messiah left, even, left him into the Jewish cruelty. Yeah, and then Messiah even paid his taxes, right? So he wouldn't have the uh, RIRS after him or something, the internal Roman service after him, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, with all their spears and everything going in to, to extort cash from the uh, Roman people. Um, yeah, so that is it. And so we have, uh, you know, stuff that we've never, ever heard before. Um, what do you guys, what do you guys make of this? I mean, other than, you know, you've, you've never heard this and that's the thing is uh, guys, when we read this, I've never read this book before. I read this, the section we read about two hours before we actually read it, just so I don't sound like a, uh, you know, a clown trying to read this. And the boys here have never heard this before because they haven't read this. So this is all new. So it's, it's new for a lot of us. What do you guys make of this gentlemen as new um, hearers of this? I think it's really good. It gives a lot of information that not all the Pharisees were bad. Not all of them were breaking Torah. There's only a few people in there that wanted to get rid of Yehoshua. Yeah. Uh, and not everyone can enter. Some people actually like cared for him. Like, hey, he had done something wrong. He might be mentally ill. You can't punish the mentally ill. They seem to like, hey, this guy is a uh, good man. He heals people. Like, are these not the signs of a Messiah? Kate, anything? Um, they, they couldn't like, they couldn't find anything because there was nothing against the Torah he had done, right? Because he walked the perfect life he did. They were just pulling at straws that they couldn't even find. They were just trying to grab things out of thin air that they were trying to do. And they, they all, the people that were actually somewhat righteous in, <coughs> in that group actually were like, well, there's nothing you can, that's not a sin. There's nothing he's doing here is a sin saying that. He is the son of Elohim. It's not a sin. He's the Messiah. It's not a sin. None of that is a sin. Yeah. Eli, do you have anything from over there? Uh, no. No. All right. Thanks, Eli. <laughs> um, yeah, I find this very, very fascinating. I, you know, this is definitely, I am very, very grateful to um, the parable of the vineyard guys, the um, Adam and his wife, and for being able to put this out and number one, for allowing us to, to have this for absolutely free. When I went to the parable of the vineyard and asked them, you know, can I, can I take this book and we include it in the scriptures we're going to be putting into it? And his word was anything for the kingdom. And so um, that is, uh, you know, the fruits of people who are seeking the kingdom, seeking the, the, the will of Yah and, you know, trying to get this out to everybody because things like this, we don't know. We've never heard of things of this nature. We never, ever heard that um, things of ever, anything like this. And so we've gained more understanding of our Messiah than we have ever gained. And um, I am, I'm very, I, I feel like we're blessed to be able to have this in these times that we are in and for these works to be, um, be able to be uh, cared for and brought forth to the people. And so everybody, um, this is uh, the end. Thank you guys very, very much. We love you guys very, very much. We hope you guys have a wonderful day. Shalom to y'all and see you later. All right, shalom. shalom.